A sure sign of the season for select parts of the country, cicadas. I can hear them already. Oh, yeah. I love that sound. Dan Smith has a look and a listen at some of the loudest insects on Earth in your moment of science. Ah, the sweet summer song of cicadas buzzing and buzzing. And oh my goodness, when will they stop buzzing? Only the males buzz and uh, they do that to attract females. There are speculations and there are data that uh, the noise is also then repelling uh, predators. Dr. Reinhard Lakes Harlan is a neurobiologist by trade and his work often has him coming in contact with many of these pesky perennial performers. That signature sound all has to do with special structures in the male's abdomen called timbals. They're a sort of membrane that uses some powerful gut muscles to vibrate and buzz and their abdomens being hollow only serves to amplify that call. The females give little clicks if they like the song and so ends the speed dating portion of the program. Groups of cicadas are called broods, and of the 3,000 plus known species, just seven are those periodical types which emerge after either 13 or 17 years spent in the soil. Young ones live in the ground for about 98 or 99 percent of yeah, their life is underground, and then only one or two percent is when they come up four weeks um, with high activity and of course as a little bit before and a little bit after, so maybe about eight weeks. Those different years can lead to some impressive overlap. Brood 10 was the largest in recent memory with hundreds of billions of cicadas emerging that year. 2025's focus will be Brood 14, centered around states like Kentucky and Pennsylvania, and Dr. Lakes Harlan says they don't all emerge in one night. When the temperature is right and when there is some rain, so the rain drops on the ground and then the uh, nymphs in the ground may recognize that and then they come out. You might think they're toiling away several feet below ours, but Dr. Lakes Harlan says when he digs up cicadas, they tend to only be about 12 to 18 inches below ground. By the way, while cicadas have mouth parts that suck water out of plant roots... They have absolutely no chance of biting. This can't uh, go through any skin or so, so they are absolutely harmless. Except, of course, that they can disturb your hearing if you have it, if you are in a very big crowd of them. A large enough brood can be as loud as a lawnmower if you stand in the middle of it, but it would take prolonged exposure to even start to get hearing damage. Safety in numbers is about all they have going for them, as pretty much any insectivore, from birds to mammals to amphibians and even fish, enjoy the annual buffet. Cicadas also help prune mature trees, and their bodies provide some good nitrogen for growing plants. They may lead simple and mostly hidden lives, but there are some downright weird things that can happen when they interact with other tiny creatures. Next week, we'll explore the doctor's research into how a cicada, a fly, and a fungus coexist in the forests of northern Michigan. Spoiler alert, it's going to get gross. For this week's Moment of Science, I'm Dan Smith. Dan is also coming out of a shell with his... <laughs> with his Hopefully just, not like that little guy. Yeah, no, just yeah. Uh, figuratively. Yeah. But, I remember. Yeah. Back in the 90s, they were right. everywhere you, for you a little while. Pick the shells off of the trees. Yeah, put them in someone's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that part. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, a lot of people would agree. Northern Michigan, beautiful this time of year. But this next story, not for the squeamish. Okay, there's your warning. Dan Smith shows us the weird relationship between a cicada, a fly, and a fungus in your moment of science. Last week, we met Dr. Reinhard Lacus Harlan discussing cicadas from their lives underground to their topside symphony. He spent decades of summers in the forests of northern Michigan, finding those specific cicadas near the tip of the mitt have to deal with a very specific parasite. This parasite is a fly, almost about the size of a normal housefly and the look of a normal housefly, but of course it's a different species. Here's where things get weird. Those flies can locate the male cicadas at long distance, meaning they're not just using the hairs on their legs to sense the world around them. It has um, evolved as an ear just to um, listen to the to its host, to the cicada, and then to find it, and then uh, eventually to to lay a larvae into this cicada. From the thousands of fly species, only a very, very few can actually hear. The cicadas are easy enough to spot by sound, especially with this sound cam, but how can you catch the flies to study them? Dr. Lox Harlan describes the grueling, months-long process of... You just have to record the cicada song, play it with a loudspeaker, and then the fly will come to the loudspeaker because it's they think it is a cicada. Oh, well, that part's easy enough. 
Early in the season, the fly is very effective at silencing the males, killing about 80% of them, so only the females come to the speaker. Once the parasites are gone by July or so, player three enters the game in the form of this fungus. They are competing about the same resource in the body of the cicada. And in the first in the season, the fly wins. And later in the season, then the fungus can develop. Massospora levispora may sound like a wizard spell, but the reality may seem even more incredible. Normally, the male sings and the female flies to him, but that fungus can not only cause the males to fly to other males, it changes the female's nervous system so they're attracted to any random noise source. The fungus is um, manipulating the behavior of, of its host to increase its, its own chances. Cicadas aren't exactly pollinators, but those spores in their abdomen can spread through the brood like wildfire. It's not quite a mind control fungus, but it sure seems like it. What is going on in the brain of the cicada, and cicadas do have a brain, is it is purely neurochemical or is it something else? Once he's back stateside, Dr. Lox Harlan hopes to answer these questions and more for future generations. This is actually life. This is biology, um, which I love to study and to have also these different aspects from neurobiology to ecology to behavior. It's always fun uh, to go there with the young people and to introduce them to these systems. For this week's Moment of Science, I'm Dan Smith. I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. Well, now I'm curious too. Like, why don't the cicadas move away from the flies before they lay the larvae? R why? Dan doesn't know, the researchers don't know, we gotta figure that out. Okay, Get well, into the mind of the cicada. Stay tuned, yeah. right? <laughs> Maybe next year we'll have an answer, you never know. <laughs> Thanks for watching Action News at 4. Action News at 5 is up next.